So welcome guys, day two of this cross Atlantic ferry and it, now it's finally time to really cross the Atlantic. Another episode joining this crew flying light twin engine aircraft across the ocean. This is Iceland to Greenland. What I could do is we could, as we are on a visual approach, yeah, yeah we could go low uh -huh. and I follow the river. If you want to do some photo shootings over here, this is quite cool. Yeah, let's do that. But your controls. That's my controls. Oh my god, Greenland. Holy smokes. This is amazing. <laughs> and we might have had too much fun flying the visual approach. Flight levels will be decided tomorrow once we know actually where the ceilings are and where the icing layers are. I've waited so long to say this guys, but Mikkelang, are you ready to cross the Atlantic? I'm fully ready to cross the freaking Atlantic! This is one of the final episodes of the multi-part Atlantic crossing. See you on the other side. It all starts here. Yeah, with the roll of fiberglass, composite, fiberglass, Kevlar. And here's how we celebrated completion of the journey. This series ended with us flying into London, which is just beside the museum that I fly warbirds out of. So I definitely made sure I got the guys there. And now it's my turn. This is probably one of my favorite things to do as flight shops, is to help facilitate other people having awesome flying experiences. How was that? This was amazing. <laughs> and I got Mickey up for a flight in the RV-14 when he was back for another ferry trip this winter. All right, you ready to go? Ready? So it's going to be a slight right crossing, but not much. Sure. Wow! He's alive. He helped me with my IFR workflow flying behind this panel. <laughs> Holy sh**. So there's almost 2,000 feet a minute right now. Wow! This is definitely going to be its own episode, but for now, let's get back to the ferry crossing. How much we see of ice in the end of the day, I don't know. And uh, to Reykjavik and sleep there tonight. Iceland! Here we are. <laughs> That's so crazy! As expected, the weather wasn't great to see Iceland from the air, but we explored on foot before dinner. And then after that fun low-key evening, we got some rest in Reykjavik, because we had to launch early the next morning to head to Greenland. And let's use a climb power of 85% to save some fuel. For the sake of practice, I hand flew this climb on instruments, but I'm still new to glass. All right, Peter, heat is on. I'm not used to using this track vector thing, aimer, <laughs> but I know once I figure it out, it's a very handy tool. So, climb power, and we go direct Sorir. We do nav green, flat lower change. 92 and autopilot on. Could also looks to be a, a valid on the route alternate also during the tough. So this is fine and yeah, to so finish really nice weather in Sanders train. One of the interesting aspects I learned while flying this trip was that standard barrow settings have different standards. So why is the altimeter setting blinking heavy? Because it thinks. Uh, yeah, well this is this is the Garmin setting what I had in the beginning. Right. Yeah. Uh, I put 5,000 in as a transition altitude, but I'm gonna change that now to uh, the American setting because we're gonna be in the Canada tonight. Okay, it's still blinking though. We can change over to the flight level. So, where's the cold front they say? The forecast was that we thought we were gonna be in cloud this whole time. Yep. So, that's the difference between yeah. theory and practice. But you had also like more kind of experience telling you not to believe some of the forecast was 
overly conservative, right? Right. And in terms of safety, we're also being very conservative wearing immersion suits. And within easy reach, we have survival gear and a full-size life raft with a tether. McKay's episode covers this, but here we are talking about it the day before. This reminds me, we didn't really brief the whose job is it to grab what in the event of ditching or whatever. I, w I would say that we're gonna, gonna load the aircraft tomorrow, yeah. yeah, and then we see what's where, yeah, and then we can see what, what's the job and uh, what it is, okay? But I would like you to fly the aircraft, yeah? I can handle the ATC. Or if you say, hey, I wanna do this kind of movie and uh, uh, this kind of picture, can you fly the aircraft? Just tell me, I will take over. Okay. No, no problem about that. And in case of any real emergency, right, then I will take over as well. Yeah. In case of we have some kind of a double engine failure, whatever, which gets us to a glide, yeah, um, and we have to prepare for ditching, yeah, then you will get command from my side, yeah. Uh, you probably do the gliding of the first part, yeah, so I can prepare everything that is, everything is in place, right, at, at the end of the glide, and I will take over the controls again. Yeah, okay, yeah. and it's gear up and... It will be gear up, and it depends on the wind speeds, yeah, if we're gonna land it against the wind, or if we're gonna, gonna uh, along, along the waves. The following discussion is from a previous leg, but it was within the context of Greenland, so I saved it for this one. You basically have, because this is here, instead of Nassasuak, where you go straight like this, only over water. Here, you go here and here, and the distance over water is actually shortened. Right. But how hospitable is this land? Is it no, well, pretty jagged? The nice thing is you have VHF contact on the road route. Right. So here, you lose a lot of VHF contact. So what you can do is, either you have an HF with you, you can use VHF relay stations uh, with other, other traffic around, if there's any, um, or you use SETCOM. Both aircraft on this trip had SATCOM on board, but the DA-42 that Mikke was flying was not as thoroughly equipped as our DA-62 was. So this is part of the reason why follow the leader works, because we got the weather radar and you don't. So I'm redundant on you guys. You will be my weather radar 10 minutes in front of me. And it's quite interesting maybe to see all the different gimbals which are in there and how it's stabilized. Uh, Steve and Martin, you're up? Yeah, we're here, go ahead. Where are you at? Oscar Delta Bravo, two traffic, fly heading 340. Heading 340, Oscar Delta Bravo. Actually, you get out of the clouds at about 6,000 feet already with sky clear above you. So we decided to climb through uh, to altitude already because there is no more icing up in the altitude and we will overfly the cold front. Yeah, I'm out already in 3,000 feet. That was a whole like coming above the airport, so that was perfect. Clear to flat level 100 right now, so I look how it will be. Yeah, we just passed Sourier already and uh, leveling off at 200. Copy it. There wasn't a heck of a lot going on during most of the cruise portion of this leg, and it was the first time that I found myself fighting off fatigue and boredom. So we'll skip to the more exciting arrival shortly. So guys, quick update from my side. We're approaching the coast of Greenland, but sadly the clouds are low and it's a broken layer. So we don't see anything, two and a half hours to go. We've addressed most of the biological needs aspects in previous episodes. Vertical track. But I wanted to expand on hydration in this one because some concerns were raised. The half hour pre-landing drink. <laughs> there were some comments in the previous episode regarding my joke about controlled dehydration, so I should have made it clear that we didn't completely eliminate fluids, we just reduced our intake. And when do we switch Barrow on our way after clear, or...? When he clears us down to altitude. Right. Many layers up front? Well, with some kind of a haze, but no ice. Do you think it's possible to get down there earlier? Uh, yeah, and, and he, he just reported broken 14,000, so... Uh, there's just been a fine weather in Sennestrem, so if you do the same thing, I've planned for 2.5 degrees uh, glide path angle. Uh, 2.1 now. And of course, oxygen is another critical need that we went into more detail in a previous episode. We have two oxygen systems on board. We have uh, an installed one and we have a mobile one. It says built right in. Uh, so it's a uh, full carbon oxygen bottle here. Yeah, this is the point where we refill the oxygen. You have one one thing here which indicates how much is in there and one thing in the cockpit which indicates how much you have left. The advantage with the carbon oxygen bottles is that they are so super light. When you pass 14,000 you could push in the oxygen with that we just uh, empty the oxygen uh, lines. 
And when the ball is off, on the ground, and we can remove the masks. There is no ice at all in this clouds at the moment. Oh. Ah. This is what I don't like, because now we are leaving, we are losing the chevron, the vertical path. Yeah. Ausgang für Linie von Delta Alpha, in chance for further descent. Ausgang für Linie von Delta Alpha, descent to altitude 7000 feet. QNH 1009, Hector Pascal. Descending 7000, QNH 1009, Oscar Delta Alpha. The path again? No, oh, it doesn't work because uh, first of all, vertical speed minus 900. This is what we had before. And what I'm doing now is, <coughs> I go here to my, to my altitude constraint, put be enough direct, activate, yeah, and now we're here back again. So you had to w wake it up again because it got cancelled? Correct. Well, it w we have been above the guide path, so it's hard then to, to do that. At the moment, we, we requ the required vertical speed is 850, right? We are going down with 900 and we are still below, so it doesn't work out. So we need to go here 700, and then it will intercept sometime. And we need to adjust 1009 at the QNH. It this is probably the last QNH you put, the next is on the setting with the numbers you are used to. Yeah. So when it's in standard mode, just touching this takes it out of standard mode? That's correct. Yeah, okay. I just, guess, just give an icing report to, to Mike. Mike, we are passing 10,000 feet already and there's no ice in the clouds. Perfect. Oscar, Echo Uniform, Delta Alpha, descent to altitude 5,000 feet. 25,000, Oscar, Delta Alpha. There we are. So this is the end of the glacier, we just happen to come out right here? Yeah, if you take a look on the right, it's, yeah. it's basically the ice cape which comes down here. Half up. Head. 7,000, no ice in the clouds, light precipitation snow, but not sticky. Perfect. That's literally the edge of the glacier right there? Yeah. That's funny, it came out right there. Sunnestream Tower, good morning, Oscar Echo Uniform Delta Alpha, a visual approach on the Sierra Nina. Oscar Echo Uniform Delta Alpha Tower, good morning, continue approach. Oscar Delta Alpha, we go. Oh, like a right pattern? Is it's a right pattern in the right. kind of You end up over there and then into the, like over that lake sort of thing for base? Right. What I could do is we could, as we have on a visual approach, yeah, yeah we could go low uh -huh. and uh, follow the river, yeah. right? If you want to do some photo shootings over here, that's yeah. quite cool. Yeah, let's do that. So your controls. That's my controls. Yeah. And of course, Mickey also had some fun with this approach. Yeah, no, Oscar Delta Bravo got the airfield inside, canceling IFR. Oscar Delta Bravo, Roger, IFR cancelled at uh, time uh, 1417, continue VFR in uh, TMA and control zone for a uh, right hand approach, runway 09. So, let's go down. Check gear. And it's throwing a bit of Greenland. Caution, turn. Yeah, no, that's cool. Turn I just, if I was by myself, I would be inclined to tell the tower, by the way, I'm not crashing, I'm just gonna do some. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. In case they're watching you, it's like, uh. So do you wanna, do you wanna catch also the landing? Should I do the landing or do you wanna do that? I wouldn't mind doing it. Okay. Do you wanna set me back up? I'll just shoot until we're back on base or something. Oscar Kane from Delta Alpha is turning right hand down with for Rambi 09. I mean, look down on the right wing. That's so amazing. Oscar, good news from Delta Bravo Tower. Good day, continue approach. Continue approach, Oscar Delta Bravo. Wow. Wow. Oscar Delta Alpha, turn from tower. You are cleared to land runway 09. Wind is 140 degrees, 8 knots. Good land on the 09, Oscar Delta Alpha. Okay, downwind, get on. This is great. Speed is good, flaps fall. This is a Harvard pattern, nice and tight. <laughs> Five, one, one, you tell me when you're ready. Okay, I can take it. Okay, your controls. Flaps sir, where we want them, gears down. I step out of the flat. And if you click to land, gears down, three greens. Yep. Flaps landing on the final then. On final or should I do it now? Yeah. Uh, as you like, you can do it now. I feel like it now is a good time. Good. Am I tight enough on this turn? Because I can't really see. Keep that ball centered. Oh, there we go. Let's 
So runway heading is set. Hi, it's Harris. I've got one nine two four. Any luck with the checks? Get on. Free green. Speed checks, flaps approach. Some more crosswind than I expected. Oh, Greaser. <laughs> huh? Just landed in Greenland in what was supposed to be six knots of wind, but I don't think this is six knots. Anyways, the airplane is so smooth. It was easy to land even in this much wind with a pretty good crosswind. Now it's going to spiral wind, 090 degrees, 8 knots, 109, just land. Get on the way, 09, Oscar for Massive thanks to sponsors and Patreon supporters for helping create this content. And let's go sterile during Mickey's landing. This one we got a very uh, it's very, how do you say, upslope? It got upslope. The next episode will get us from Greenland to Canada, and then the following episode will be the guys flying with Ron, which was awesome. And until next time, keep your flight chops sharp. Probably after you talk with a 90 year old grandfather. No. The, oh, but you are so sharp on everything, that's crazy. Oh my god.